Greetings, viewers. Thanks for tuning in today. Got the passenger side all buttoned up. New struts in, new upper and lower ball joints are in, tie rod ends were good, everything's put back together. I'll torque that nut on the end of the axle after I put the wheel on. Gonna do brakes. Uh, that'll be another video. It'll be but a couple of minutes because brakes don't take very long on these. I was waiting for that bushing uh, from East Coast Gear Supply to come in before I put this side back together. I did get my new ball joint uh, put on over here, decided to go ahead and replace it, didn't know what them other ones were. I uh, went ahead and bolted it up over here, decided it didn't make that much difference, leaving it loose like I tried on the other side. So here is that bushing I was talking about it's for the 7.5 inch clamshell, which is what we take in the, the third gen. Uh, this unit goes in in place of the bearing. When I get started on it, I'll show you that you will need this tool to pull the old bearing out. Also got this from ECGS. Uh, when I ordered my very first bushing, I ordered this in a removal tool and the install kit as well. Uh, money well spent. This will be the third time I've been using them. So worth it. Uh, we'll start, I will start by pulling the axle out here in just a minute and show you how to get that bushing put in and then I'll button this side up and be ready to roll. Okay viewers, if you've ever watched my show before, you know everything I say is fact, right, wrong, or uh, indifferent. Yesterday I said Looks like there's an awful lot of room for grease to go in here, but there's no grease, so it doesn't go in there. It's been a long time since I put my last set of OG Toyota ones in, and they did come with grease. Well, I went through the box of parts that I got and found the bags of grease separate from the bags that the ball joints were in. Wanted to go through, now this is just for the uppers, the lowers are pre-greased and the boot is on and sealed. These you put the boot on and put the wire on that I barked up in front of the camera and everything else. Now they send you two kinds of grease. A huge amount here for just this little bit around the top so that it slides around this when you put it on. And it slides around up here when you turn after you put it on. So you're supposed to have grease. Uh, if you can see what I'm doing there, grease in the middle there, grease on the top. And grease around this piece here is the white grease. Now, uh, like I can say ordinarily I wouldn't uh, go through and admit that I did this wrong. I, I always will own it though. If I if I screw it up, I'll own it. Um, but anyway, I thought this was important enough that I should come back and redo this. Now it says to fill it in the boot. Uh, I'm not going to fill it in the boot. I'm going to put it under the boot because. That's going to be easier. Some of it might squish out because of the angle everything is sitting at. But I suppose that's going to be better than not having it. Now I made a pretty big deal about Toyota didn't think it needed grease. Then it didn't need grease in my opinion. Well, I'm eating my words. That don't happen often. But uh, I ain't going to lie to you, this is important enough. So I'm going to finish greasing this real quick, and then I'll show you how I'm going to... Well, I guess I don't have to show you how to rewire the boot, because I showed you that already. But uh, anyway, I'll get this finished, packed in there, and then I'll rewire the boot anyhow. Okay, so I got that packed in there, put back on, trying to save face. What they send you is a piece of mechanics wire. I just have some thin mechanics wire out off of the shelf here that I'm going to use. Make sure you get it in the groove nice and tight. They recommend that you go around twice. Make sure you stay in that groove and not out of it. Get your twist started here. And then grab it with your vice grip. Continue twist. Get it nice and snug and tight. Now if you watched my ball joint video where I screwed that up the first time, you know now I have the other one already installed. So I got to go and take that loose. 
and take the boot off and re-grease that one on the other side before I can finish because if I don't, it'll drive me crazy. So, grease them. Don't pay attention to what I said in the other one where I said don't have to grease them. Okay, made all the corrections on the other side and it's time to get started here, axle removal time. Uh, per usual, I get ahead of myself and I don't always press the button to get the camera started, but that nut right here. Uh, yeah, there you can see it. That one right there. I get this pry bar here that's got a nice bent edge on it right up behind that nut and the flange of the axle. You give it a good two or three jerks like that, axle pops out. Uh, if you knock your dust cover off, don't worry about that. That happens. There's your dust cover, and uh, you can tap it back on again. Good idea first to lower the other side of the vehicle if you got both sides up because you're going to lose fluid, and if you're not raised up on this side, it's going to fall out the whole time you're busy. Now, this is that bearing in question. You can see right here moving. That next thing there, that's your axle engagement. That's where your axle goes in the teeth into your differential. But this bearing right here is the one that's going to get removed and replaced with that bushing here just in a minute. Um, you can check your CV, stock CVs, or best CVs. Let me get out of the grease. I just made a mess on this one. Um, if there are they should have some movement in and out, of course, as that's how they flex, but they should have no movement, clickies, or roughness when you wobble them or try to turn them. Like this one is in great shape. There's no clickies. There's no weird noises. I'm going to put this right back in. I bet if I wipe all the grease off this, it's probably got the blue dot, which shows you a Toyota. I may actually look for that. I may not. Um, not that big of a deal to me right now. So I'm going to let that drip grease for a minute. I'm going to get my removal tool set up, show you how to get that put in there, and we'll get this thing out and switched in no time flat. I'm going to stop here real quick and mention this thing about this stupid snap ring on the end here because I keep forgetting to mention it, and I got a helpful tip on that. Uh, you can see as you look at it from the end, kind of here, when the opening, see it's got the opening in it. If the opening is pointed down when you're putting it in, you can see it just sticks out in a couple of places. If it's pointing up, the C part, the opening is pointing up, you can see how it hangs down all the way around through those splines. I hope you can see that, what I'm talking about there, how it hangs down. And that makes it like way more difficult to put in. Uh, I keep forgetting to mention that. I forgot to mention it when I did that. And uh, same thing with popping it out. If you're trying to pop it out and it's struggling, push it in and turn it and then pull it back out. Try to pop it loose again because it'll move this ring. And if it's hanging and giving you all that much resistance, it's tougher than when it's hanging the other way and giving you less. So there's a minute to learn something. I hope it made sense to you. Okay, first thing that I do is I stuff a paper towel in the end there with my big long needle nose pliers. Uh, you just stuff it in far enough so it goes into the splines so it's past your bearing here so you can still get your tool in. Now the reason for that, once you take this a special tool that you get apart this little piece you have to put in there with a magnet and then thread the other uh, part in I'll show you the this part here in to it to become a puller and then you'll tighten the nut down it'll all make sense here in a second but you got to put this in there like with a magnet first Oop, like got one of those right there and uh, once you get that in there with the magnet then you'll stick your puller in there I'll try to get the camera set up so I can show you how to do that. And I think that might be the best I'm going to be able to do. My hands will probably be in the way during part of it, but you'll uh, get the idea, hopefully, what's going on here. So, take this thing here on your little magnet, and it's going to tip a little bit as it goes in there, but yeah. 
are. Get it in there past the... Boop. You don't want it to go into the gear slot. So you kind of just jiggle it and wiggle it around a little bit. Now I got it wedged. It's not quite where it goes yet, but now I can get my um, threaded piece started. That gives me more control over the puller now. And I should be able to get it to go. And it's not going. And of course it's going to be difficult. Let me try that again. With a little bit of something different. I'm taking that unit out anyway. So it doesn't matter if you damage the bearing. But of course you don't want to damage anything beyond the bearing. Okay. It's usually not a pain in the ass like this to get in there. I don't know that I'm missing something here. I don't know, tip or trick I can recall for getting this in there. Let me try this a little more time without the magnet. Maybe the big pliers is the trick. Well, fuck. I about got it in there. Let me try this here. Put this threaded in. There it goes. Jeez. I remember it being such a fighter before, but there you got to watch me fumble fuck around with that for a while. Ah, uh, it's in there. Get a couple of good threads worth in that you know, so you know you got a good bite on it there. Now, you're going to smash your seal here. If your seal is good, uh, it's fine to leave that because the lip that your puller goes on around here uh, misses your seal. The bearing misses your seal. Everything does. So if you don't want to replace your seal, you don't have to. Slide that piece up over the top. And... Start your nut on the end here. There we go. Got the nut started there. Should have checked and seen what thread that thing was. Whoops, before I um, took it away from there, but I didn't. I didn't put the wrench on it. I'm going to say that it looks like a 19 to me. Uh, it's a 22. Wow. Okay. That was way off. And that's a 24. Where's my 22? Okay, please hold while I go fetch a 22. I was going to go with a socket, but I thought maybe if I did it with a wrench, it'd show easier what it's doing. It's pulling everything up together right now, getting it nice and fat, flat and pulling it. And just keep turning it in the tightening position. You'll feel the bearing let go. I don't know if you can see it starting to come out yet, but it is. It'll come out and meet the puller. Takes just a minute. You could put a ratchet and a socket on it and do it from out here, but... Uh, ah, I won't make you watch me continue doing this. You get the gist of it. Hang on. Okay, so you just keep on spinning that wrench. I don't advise the wrench because that was pain in the butt and took forever. Uh, everything will drop right down into your pan of grease when it gets done. Sometimes you might find the puller doesn't have enough throw. Uh, just loosen the nut, spread the puller back a little bit, and put a spacer out here on this edge and pull it a little bit further. I had to do that. Today, I just used these behind it. Um, but anyway, let me dig that out and clean it up, and we'll move on. Okay, on um, part of the why is this necessary 
Uh, I'm going to try and show you why it's necessary. It says this bearing is uh, 300,000 miles on it. And if you look, see that movement back and forth? That's just because it's wore out. I mean, it's a bearing. You could put a new bearing in there and it would be okay. But these wear out and cause axle wobble, especially if you have changed suspension geometry, i.e. a lift. Um, so this is the bearing, or the bushing, the, the Teflon bushing. Now I put some lube on the inside of this, of course, before I slide it up on that raw axle because it is such a nice fit. You can tell when you put that on there, it just it fits super nice. You tell it trying to wiggle it, no play in it whatsoever. Very nice fit. It's a Teflon bushing on a, in a steel sleeve. You can see the Teflon inside there, steel around the outside, and steel on the face to protect it. This is what will stick out. That will go into the axle first. This will stick out. Now, they don't send instructions, but there's instructions online. I, however, have an old school one from way back when, and they sent an instruction kit. The online instructions don't tell you that these don't always drive flat, so I'm told by someone who did the online thing and then asked me why mine didn't drive flat, and I was like, it doesn't have to. Here, let me show you this thing in the instructions right here. And he's like, well, that's great information to have because the online instructions don't tell me that or have that picture. So. If you uh, do or if they don't, I don't know. Uh, I've not been on there and looked myself, but it can stick out up to uh, 0.035 or 0.065, which is almost two millimeters that it can stick out. So uh, correct with the steel out, and I'm going to get ready and set this up, put this in, and we'll go from there. Or we. I keep saying we. Nobody's over here helping me. Hang on. Okay, because that takes three hands as well. I take the new unit, hold it in place, take my driver. Now my driver is only yay long. My, uh, my swing is way out here where the camera is. I put this bar on there because it makes it easier for me. Get it nice and flat. And smack on it. Keep making sure you're driving flat. I hope that's not too loud in there. But it just takes some nice good solid smacks. You want to make sure each time you're flat. I tighten this nut down with a wrench um, because this thing will come loose if you don't. You don't want that happening while you're driving stuff in. So you don't need the cheater bar but without it you're way up in there trying to do this swinging with all this stuff in your way of the, from the IFS. So you can see that it's going in. I'm going to go ahead and finish driving that in now because it's knocking the camera out of the way and we'll move on. Okay, now I'll try to get this in there and show you whether they were talking about sits flat or not. This one sits flush right here. Uh, when I did it on my 2000 and on my Tundra both, it stuck out just a little bit. So if yours doesn't go flat right there, uh, even with this piece of the, you know, that you just drove it into, uh, then that's still okay. It can be up to two millimeters out. And I held the camera all sideways, but I don't think that matters there. I'm gonna put that seal in real quick. Okay, now the new seal is in. Um, some of the grease that is running out there, use that to lube up your seal. You'll see there's already some in this Teflon bushing. Smear that all around real good. You still got to take your paper towel out of there. Don't forget it. Uh, I like to use a paper towel because if you do forget it, which you should never forget it, uh, it's paper. It'll chew up. Plus, if it gets all soaked with lube and tears up or something, I mean, it come out of there just fine. But if it did, it's paper. It isn't going to hurt anything. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my axle back in and start getting this thing all buttoned up and it'll all be done. So there's your East Coast Gear Supply bushing install. Uh, update on what I did wrong on the uh, ball joint. So make sure your seal is seated in there completely all the way around. You can tell by the reveal when you feel it with your finger. Uh, remember to keep your C-clip 
with the opening pointing down when you're installing your stuff so that it uh, gives you the least amount of resistance. I'll uh, hold this from the end in case I come up with something I forgot in the meantime, but otherwise I'm going to put this biatch back together and ready to roll.